Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay. So, we will continue with the discussion of uh, mathematics in uh, Brahmas Pada Siddhanta. So, now is the second part. So, mainly we will be discussing the diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral, then rational triangles and uh, quadrilaterals, then chords of a circle. So, that is the plane figures. So, then we go to the volumes with uniform and tapering cross sections, pyramids and frustums and uh, shadow problems. So, earlier we had discussed the circumradius of a triangle and a cyclic quadrilateral, cyclic quadrilateral. So, we will now discuss the diagonals. So, Brahma Gupta does not specifically mention that it is a cyclic quadrilateral, but it is applicable only to that. So, what does he say? Karnashita bhujagatayakam ubayathanyonya bhajitam gunayet yogena bhuja prati bhuja varayoho karnau pade vishame. The sums of the product of the sides about both the diagonals being divided by each other multiply the quotients by the sum of the products of the opposite sides. The square roots of the results are the diagonals in a trapezium. So, this is a cyclic quadrilateral A, B, C, D and uh, with sides A, B, C and D and the diagonals are A, C and B, D and some of the product of the sides about the diagonal A C. Okay. So, he talks about the sum of the product uh, products of the sides about the diagonal A C. So, that is A B you see this is one side. So, these are the uh, two sides abetting this uh, diagonal and the other if we take the other part it is C D. So, A B plus C D. So, similarly for the diagonal B D it is a C plus B D and some of these things you know some of the products of opposite sides is A D plus B C. So, these are the three things we want. Then the result is A C is D 1 is equal to square root of A C plus B D by A B plus C D into A D plus B C and B D is the other diagonal is A B plus C D. So, this is the interchange you know. So, A B plus A D this will go up and A C plus B D this will come down this A D plus B C that is the product of the some of the products of opposite side that will be the same. So, these are the results for the two diagonals and uh, note that D 1 D 2 is A D plus B C which we will be using it will be useful later in many applications. So, this is the first time that the diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral individually have been given and uh, it came to be discovered much later around 17th century or so in Europe and earlier result they had only the Ptolemy's result and the product of the diagonals not the individual diagonals. So, the individual diagonals are given by Brahma Gupta for the first time. So, this proof he would have a proof I mean one cannot get a result like this without having a method to do it but he has not given it neither does the commentary give it and later we will uh, in this series of lectures yukti basha proof will be presented in detail but for our immediate purpose we will use you know what is the so called modern way of doing things so you have this cyclic quadrilateral a b c d so what you do is extend a b to c prime and uh, such that C C prime is perpendicular to A B, A B C prime. Similarly, you drop the perpendicular A D prime on the side C D. Okay. So, then <coughs> so this A D D prime see this angle, this angle will be yeah. So, this angle A D D prime is equal to 180 degrees minus this angle. We know that in a cyclic quadrilateral right. So, that how that happens. Okay. So, and that is equal to C B C prime. So, this angle is basically equal to 
this angle. So, and uh, one angle is uh, 90 degree in each of the triangles. So, these two triangles A D D prime and C B C prime, these two triangles are similar. Using this and the theorem of right triangles, one can obtain the stated expression for the diagonals. So, what you essentially do is A C square, you see A C square is C C prime square plus A C prime square. Okay. And then C C prime squared itself is equal to B C squared minus B C prime square. So, like that you use these expressions and B C prime is equal to A C prime minus A B. So, using these results is a bit of algebra only nothing else no great concept is involved you can get this result. And both here also is the same thing is there you will get essentially two expressions for A C. So, equating these two using the similar triangles using the theorem of the right triangle one can get this. So, that is a very important result which has been you know due to Brahma Gupta. So, now we will go to what are known as rational triangles and trapezia. So, in Indian mathematics uh, works, so there is some importance is given to construct you know triangles, quadrilaterals and various figures where all the sides are rational, all the sides are rational. See that is not always easy to construct. So, that is what is being done. He gives the procedures to construct various figures mainly triangles with isosceles triangle, right triangle, triangle scalene triangles etcetera, isosceles trapezia and trapezia with three equal sides where all the sides are rational. See for instance, for isosceles triangle he gives the following construction. So, you take x and y to be rational okay, then take the base to be 2 into x squared minus y squared and two sides to be x squared plus y squared isosceles triangle then perpendicular is 2 x y. So, then one can see that it is rational you know wholly rational. Here is a very important thing. So, if you take this right triangle triangle. Okay, so, one side is x squared minus y squared the other side is x y, the diagonal is x y plus y squared and the perpendicular is 2 x y. So, this is used to you know construct the Pythagorean triplets which Professor Ram Subramanian was telling. Okay. So, by using integral values for x and y you can get various things you know 3, 4, 5 and uh, various other things you can get. And another way to do it is essentially the same principle is involved. So, suppose you take the side A which is arbitrary and suppose you have some arbitrary x number I mean rational number again. So, when you take the upright to be half of a squared by x minus x then the diagonal will be half of a squared by x plus x and it is equal to square root of b squared plus a squared. So, it will be rational. Okay. So, that comes uh, this slight non triviality please remember that because if you take you know one triangle right angle triangle with sides 1 and upright 1 the diagonal will be root 2 it will not be rational. So, you have to have some method of constructing the rational thing that is what is being done here. Now, for an isosceles trapezium so essentially it uses these right triangles with the rational sides and uh, for instance isosceles trapezium if you start with some right triangle with A side A upright B and diagonal C then you can you can take this b to be some half of a squared by y minus y kind of thing and take the summit to be something like this and base to be s plus 2 b okay where x is another rational number so essentially what you have is this kind of a rational isosceles trapezium these are the two abetting triangles here a b c a is the upright these are all rational the summit s in fact you can take summit s to be arbitrary rational number and uh, you will get this you know base will be of course 2 b plus s. Now, a more non trivial thing is a rational trapezium with three equal sides. So, this is not that easy. So, start with a triangle with side a upright b and diagonal d you start with that. So, then <coughs> you construct the that the three equal side is constructed like this the three equal sides capital D is a squared plus b squared. So, this this side this one 
this one and this one a square plus b square and the b is 3a squared 3a squared minus b squared and this base minus summit by 2. So, this will be a squared minus b squared. So, essentially this is a squared minus b squared. So, this is a squared plus b squared and this will be necessarily be 2 a b. So, all three sides will be equal and this base will be the, the different all rational. So, next he constructs any uh, cyclic quadrilateral in a very ingenious manner. So, there is a very interesting construction that comes in uh, Brahmas Putta Siddhanta. Verse 38 says Jatyadvaya Koti Bujaha Parakarana Gunaha Bujaha Chetur Vishame Adikova Bhur Mukamuno Bahud Vitayam Bujau Anyo. The uprights and sides of two rectangular triangles reciprocally multiplied by the diagonals or the four dissimilar sides of a trapezium, the greatest is the base, the least is the summit and the two others are the flanks. So, what he is doing is he considers two right angle rational right angle triangles. So, that is is a 1 upright is a 1 b 1 c 1 all rational similarly a 2 b 2 c 2. So, then what he does is c 2 c 2 into b 1 is one side c 1 into b 2 is other side then c 1 into a 2 and c 2 into a 1. So, you are you reciprocally multiplied the sides and the diagonals of other triangles. Okay. So, this is the cyclic quadrilateral from right triangles and one can show that actually of course, he is just giving the sides, but um, um, one should, we should see what exactly are the segments also. Bhaskara too discusses this in detail in his Leelavati and gives the diagonals and Buddhi Vilasani of Ganesha Devagna explain the construction in more detail. So, what he does is this C 1 A 1 B 1. Okay. So, this is one right triangle. So, what you do is you multiply all the sides by the upright of the other triangle. So, you will get this then multiply all the these things uh, quantity C 1 B 1 A 1 by the side of that. So, that is other thing. Okay. So, these are the two triangles we generated and similarly from the C 2 B 2 A 2. So, these are the four triangles and you place them together you have to place them properly. So, what you do is you know you the this triangle C 2 B 1 you know 1 B 1 B 2 should come here you know C 2 B 1 B 1 A 2 B 1 B 2 that will be one triangle as you can check. The other triangle will there will be one more triangle beside B 1 B 2 you know upright by B 1 B 2 and like this. So, if you put all these things together then it will be the cyclic quadrilateral. In fact, one can see that it is the diagonals are meeting perpendicularly here you see the two diagonals are intersecting at right angles. So, this is uh, Brahma Gupta does not give this uh, fully, he has given the sides only, but this is how it can be constructed. So, this is one of the methods you know various interesting methods that we frequently come across in uh, Indian mathematics you know generation of various kinds of things you know using some simple concepts. So, not just generalities, but construction of various things with some specific properties. So, here the sides are as I have mentioned C 2 B 1 C 1 B 2 and the other sides are C 2 A 1 C is equal to C 1 A 2 and the diagonals will be A 1 B 2 plus A 2 B 1. So, this particular construction will give the parts of the diagonal also and it can be checked that the circumradius of both, of both the triangles A B C and A B D. So, they are C 1 C 2 divided by 2. So, that means, because if it is a cyclic quadrilateral then the circumradius of the two triangles which are involved they should be equal. So, that is guaranteed. So, the figure is indeed a cyclic quadrilateral. Then the expression for diagonals you have, you have by construction itself you have got the diagonal, but we had got the expression for the diagonals from Brahma Gupta in a general way right. So, they should coincide one can check that the diagonal D 1 is A C plus B D into A D plus B C by a b plus c d that is a 1 b 2 plus a 2 b 1 a 1 a 2 plus b 1 b 2. So, all these are so this is a very 
output construction Bhaskara will actually generalize this. So, here using these four triangles we have constructed one cyclic quadrilateral whose diagonals are intersecting perpendicularly. Later Bhaskara will give another cyclic quadrilateral using the same triangles, but you know, but two triangles are interchanged kind of a thing. So, then the diagonals will not intersect perpendicularly. So, another thing is here. So, then another very interesting kind of a problem is uh, discussed very briefly in uh, Ramasputta Siddhanta as characteristic of many books. It is just given in one verse, but it contains a lot of information, but it does not give the details. He says, Ishta gunakara gunito girjutsayaha purantara manashtam dhyutam gunakara bhajita utpato anyasya samagartyo ho. The height of the mountain taken into a multiplier arbitrarily put is the distance of the town. That result being reserved and divided by the multiple added to 2 is the height of the leap. The journey is equal. Okay? I mean, it is just somewhat mysterious, you know, where is the mountain, where is the leap and all that. But Putudaka Swami will, uh, the commentator will give some detail. He explains the situation in the commentary. On the top of a certain hill are two ascetics. One of them being a wizard travels through the air. Springing from the summit of the mountain, he ascends to a certain elevation and proceeds by an oblique descent diagonally to a neighboring town. The other walking down the hill goes by land to the same town. Their journeys are equal. I desire to know the distance of the town from the hill and how high the wizard rose. So, what is being discussed is the following. So, here you know this is a hill H you know. So, this is a base and this is the summit of the hill. There is a town here. Okay. So, two ascetics are here, here okay. <coughs> so, one um, one of the ascetics who you know he is uh, not so interesting. So, he will just get down from this sorry. He will get down the hill and then walk to the town. The other uh, wizard you know he will go up, he will leap and then zui he will go down you see using very power, <laughs> yogic power. So, he will read that and it is given that the both the journeys are equal. Okay. So, then what is the height and how are they related? So, that is what we have to find. So, in this figure h is the height of the hill and c h is the distance of the town from the hill and the c is a multiplier. Okay. Just assume that the distance of the town is c times the height of the hill. So, one ascetic clearly he travels this distance h plus c h right. He goes down and then perpendicularly he goes from the base of the hill to the town. The other ascetic who is <coughs> more flamboyant. So, he will go up by this uh, height um, jumps by an amount c h by c plus 2 and he goes diagonally to this thing. So, we will come to the other figure later. So, we have a right triangle triangle. So, whose right uh, upright is h plus c h by c plus 2 you see this height he has jumped right second ascetic and um, the side is c h and the diagonal d is clearly. So, this h plus you have to add this also h 1 h plus c h by c plus 2 whole square plus c h whole square. So, this is the square root of that that will be the uh, uh, this thing this diagonal and the distance travelled by the ascetic is c h by c plus 2 plus d naturally the second ascetic is jumps and then goes along the diagonal. So, we should have this h plus c h must be equal to c h by c plus 2 plus this result. Okay. So, is there any restriction on c or h or whatever it is? In fact, one can see that there is no restriction for every c and h it is satisfied. So, that is very interesting for every c and h this you can check that and Prutudaka actually takes h is equal to 12 and c is equal to 4 to illustrate the problem. So, the height is 12 and the uh, ascetic is jumping by amount c h by c plus 2 is 4 he is saying c is equal to 4. So, 12 into 4 by 6. So, this is uh, 8. So, clearly the height of the right triangle is 20. Okay. So, here 12 is the height of the height uh, the hill 
8 is the amount by which he jumps and uh, the distance of the tone from the base of the hill is 40 h. Okay. So, 40 h and uh, this is 20 and then 52 which will be the diagonal and one can see that so the one the one ascetic is traveling 12 plus 48 other is traveling 8 plus 52. So, they are equal. So, there is a nice application of the right angle triangle. So, the next application that Brahmagupta considers continuing with the flare uh, this thing is uh, plane figures is the circle and some examples and uh, results related to that. So, in what spot is a practical or approximate value of the ratio of the circumference and the diameter pi is stated to be 3 and root 10 is stated to be the correct value. So, he is uh, giving an approximate a pro practical value which is used several times in ma many situations. So, that is taken to be 3 and uh, this root 10 is uh, a value for pi which is there in many books essentially especially in Jaina works and all that they always use this root 10 as the approximate value of pi. But I do not know why though Brahmagupta is following I mean after Aryabhata and you are aware of his work somehow he does not give the value of uh, pi which is given by Aryabhata he does not use it. And the area of the circle is stated to be correct pi r squared where r is the radius and the semi diameter I mean it is not stated this way obviously it is not stated this way it says that half of circumference into semi diameter as uh, uh, it was told in the last lecture that is what is written. So, now he will discuss some chords and arrows vrutte sharona gunitat vyasa chaturahatat padam jiva jyavarga chaturahata sharabhaktaha sharayuto vyasaha. So, in a circle the chord is the square root of the diameter less the arrow taken into the arrow and multiplied by 4. The square of the chord divided by 4 times the arrow and added to the arrow is the diameter and in the next verse or part of it will say ja vyasa kruti visheshat mula vyasantarardha vishuhu ishuhu alpaha half the difference of the diameter and the root extracted from the difference of the square of the diameter and the chord is a smaller arrow. So, essentially what he is doing is this is a circle with center O. So, you have this triangle A B C. Okay. So, this is a right angle triangle at A. O is the center of the circle diameter is B C. So, this is called arrow shara which uh, Professor Ram Subramanian mentioned uh, this thing you know this is the worst sign he called it is related to that and the jaw is uh, this chord a f full jaw you see and this a d is essentially the sign of this angle a o d. So, that is jardha right. So, jaw is the whole jaw is this chord a f is 2 into a d so, and uh, arrow is c d. Okay, suppose you call it by A and the chord is A f is equal to 2 A d and it is stated that chord is 2 A d square root of d minus A into A into 4. So, if you d if you know A and d you can find out chord and arrow of course, it is half of if you give the chord and the diameter you can find the arrow which is half of d minus square root of d square minus r square. So, this is also a non trivial result because you have to use the similarity of this triangle you see. A B D and then you know some this A D C kind of a thing and they are both of them similar to the original triangle A B C. I mean I, may, I must say give it in the correct order, but that is how it is because of the similar triangles only. So, in fact we will see that now see in this triangle A B C angle B A C is 90 degrees as I said right because B C is the diameter. So, triangles A D B and C D A. Okay. So, A D B and C D A. So, this angle is equal to this angle right sorry this angle is equal to this angle and this angle B is equal to this angle here. So, they are similar. So, 
ए डी बी एंड सी डी आर सिमिलर सो ए डी बै डी बी इज ईक्वल टू सी डी बै ए डी सो देर फोर यू कंसिडर ए डी स्क्वेर इज ईक्वल टू डी बी इंटू सी डी इंटू डी मैनस ए इंटू ए एंड द कॉल ए डी इज ईक्वल टू टू ए डी इज वेरी क्लियरली फ्रॉम दिस स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ डी मैनस ए इंटू फोर स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ फोर बिकॉज दिस यू हैव टू गेट दिस टू सो दिस इज i hope it is taught in schools no because in early we certainly had this uh, result given to us in our high school so similarly if you take square root of d squared minus cot square you will get d minus 2a because it is this so the a shara is half of d minus d minus 2a is half of d minus this so this is the stated result so now then it talks about intersecting circles some arrows and erosion as they call two circles arrows and erosion so circle 1 is having diameter d1 this is circle 1 the circle 2 has having diameter d2 and common chord is f and arrow corresponding to circle 1 is uh, dh so this is the one right this is the arrow is a1 and arrow corresponding to the other circle gd is a2 the erosion gh Called erosion, e is equal to a1 plus a2. See this kind of a thing comes in, for instance, eclipse, eclipses. This kind of a situation will come. Okay, when sun is uh, partially covered by the moon, or moon is uh, partially covered by the earth. Okay, uh, so then this kind of a situation will come, and we, all these will be actually one has to one can calculate these things. You know, they are of importance. how much is you know eroded at any given time after the eclipse starts so that is the i mean remember that brahma sputta siddhanta is an astronomy work so naturally some things related to astronomy will be there <coughs> so find now to given the arrows garros to find the arrows given the diameter and the erosion suppose you are given the diameters and the erosion gh so then you can find the arrows so the result for this is व्यासो ग्रासो न गुणो ग्रासो नहीं क्यो धृतो बाणो द एरोजन बींग सब्ट्रैक्टेड फ्रॉम बोथ द डायमीटर्स द रिमाइंडर्स मल्टीप्लाइड विद एरोजन एंड डिवाइडेड बाई द सम ऑफ द रिमाइंडर्स और द एरोस सो इट इज यू नो यू मल डिवाइड दिस सो डायमीटर इज सर डी वन एंड डी टू यू सब्ट्रैक्ट द एरोजन फ्रॉम देर फ्रॉम दिस एंड देन You multiply by the erosion and divide by the sum of the diameters minus by the erosion. So this is the result. So one can prove it again all essentially right angle triangles only. So here the chord, chord is the same for both circle one and circle two. This is the chord. So that is square root of four into you know that. So d one minus a one into a one must be equal to d two minus a two into a two. so from this one finds that d1 a1 minus d2 a2 is a1 squared minus a2 squared so is a1 minus a2 into a1 plus a2 and a1 plus a2 is the sum of the arrows that is the erosion how much is you know one this thing is eclipsing the other basically a1 minus a2 into e so now you get a1 into d1 minus e is this so <coughs> therefore a2 is equal to a1 into d1 minus e by d2 minus e from this very simple And substituting this in a1 plus a2 is equal to e. So we find, so we got a relation. A1 plus a2 is e, and we got a relation between a1 and a2. So using this, we get a1 into 1 plus d1 minus e by d2 minus e is e. So dh is a1 is this, and g2 gd a2 is e into d1 minus e by d1 plus d2 minus. So these are the results. So now <coughs> you can do the other way also. So from chord, suppose you are given instead of the diameter and the erosion, suppose you are given the arrows and the uh, chord, then you can find out the diameter and erosion. So that is what he said next. Ista sharad vya bhakte jardak kruti sharaphale yutau vyaso. 
சரயோகோ ஃபலயோரைக்கியம் கிராசோ கிராசோனமைக்கியம் தத் த ஸ்கேர் ஆஃப் த செமி கார்ட் பீங் டிவைடட் செவரலி பை த கிவன் ஆரோஸ் த கோஷன்ஸ் ஆடட் டு த ஆரோஸ் ரெஸ்பெக்டிவ்லி ஆர் த டயமீட்டர்ஸ் த சம் ஆஃப் த ஆரோஸ் இஸ் தி எரோஷன் அண்ட் தட் ஆஃப் த கோஷன்ஸ் இஸ் தி ரெசிடு ஆஃப் சப்ட்ராக்டிங் தி எரோஷன் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் ஸோ எசென்ஷியலி யூ ஹேவ் டு same result is there you can use the similar uh, arguments to get this there is nothing very interesting about it essentially you have to use that result you know that cot is equal to square root of d minus a into 4 that what is done and this relation between a1 and a2 we had got okay so the next topic he will discuss is excavations or volume so he talks about the calculation of the various kinds of volumes so he says in the verse 44 kshetra palam veda gunam samakata palam hrutam tribihi shuchyah mukatula tulya bhujayakanyeka grahrutani samarajjuh the area of the plane figure multiplied by depth gives the content of the equal or regular excavation and that divided by 3 is the content of the needle or pyramid or cone so this is um, he is uh, discussing two situations so this is a this thing where there is a uniform cross section i mean the cross section itself may be irregular but it is uniform throughout okay it is raised by height d and then the pyramidal value volume okay that is it is tapering to some point okay so these these are the two kinds of thing and his for this he says the excavation volume is area into depth so that is a into d whereas this is called a needle suchi sometimes it's called needle also in this thing pyramid or cone the volume is a into d by 3 so this is the result which is stated okay so we'll discuss this now in some little detail and um, for some other things also is uh, discussed mukatala uchidala gunitam veda gunam vyavaharikam ganitam mukatala gunitaikyardam veda gunam syad ganitam autram autra ganitad vishodya vyavahara phalam tribihi bajet shesham labdam vyavahara phale prakshipya phalam bhavati sukshmam the area deduced from the moieties halves of the sums of the sides at the top and at bottom being multiplied by the depth is a practical measure of the content half the sum of the areas are top and bottom multiplied by the depth gives the gross content okay so forget about this moieties that is some victorian english okay because is cold book translation it <laughs> means half only so <laughs> so essentially what he is saying is that he gives various kinds of approximation and then the exact result and uh, subtracting the practical content from the other divide the difference by 3 and add the quotient to the practical content the sum is the neat content or exact value so what is what is he what is he talking about that we should you know understand so this is so called frustrum okay this also is an old word we don't use it nowadays but anyway so what is see here it is not tapering up to a point it is tapering up to some value only okay so it is some see base is let us say take the base to be some square of side a okay then it is tapering up to some point where the side is a prime okay and uniformly it is decreasing uniformly it is decreasing the side of the square from a to a prime so that is called a frustum so he says for this kind of a thing the practical measure of volume is a plus a prime by 2 whole squared into depth is a practical volume and the gross content somewhat better this thing is a squared plus a prime squared by 2 into d so that is essentially you are here you are averaging the sides and then taking the square and multiplying by the depth whereas the next you are averaging the areas area of this is a squared area of this is a prime squared averaging that and multiplying by the depth and the exact value is supposed to be p plus g minus p by 3 so that is the result he is giving so this is the full you know uh, figure for this 
one can uh, find this for a square kind of cross section. So, remember that p comes you know this a plus a prime whole square um, by 4 right that comes so a square plus a prime square plus 2 a prime by 4 into d this is the practical d the gross is this. So, g minus p is this one can show that exact value is a square plus a prime square plus a a prime by 3 ok. So, now we can calculate the actual value using standard method this is a stated result we are not giving any proof. So, how do we get this how do we see you can do it like this the a by h see suppose it is tapering uniformly you see at a constant rate. So, then a by h you see this h is the total height a by h is a prime divided by h minus d ok by proportion because this you know corresponds to some perpendicular h minus d and this corresponds to perpendicular h. So, as it is you know growing uniformly or is tapering uniformly this proportion can be used. So, then a into h minus d is equal to a prime h. So, from this one get you know h is a prime d by a minus a prime. So, h minus d is this. So, the actual volume will be so <coughs> the total volume of this is 1 by 3 a squared h using the same kind of a thing what we had got for the earlier thing the full volume you know whether it is tapering volume it is one third of the area of the base into the height. So, one third a squared h is the total volume from this you have to subtract this volume right top volume that is a prime squared is the area and h prime minus h minus d is the height. So, if you subtract this so, then you will get 1 by 3 a square plus a prime square plus a a prime into d. So, this Brahmagupta's exact value coincides with this. So, in fact, uh, why it is 1 by 3? See, that is a in fact, he is saying that it is valid for all kinds of situations, you know, he is not restraining containing this thing, you know, but probably he may be thinking of some square or rectangle kind of a thing, but actually it is valid for all kinds of situations. So, how do we understand it how do we how does one uh, get it uh, in a modern using the so called modern way you see or even if you do not want to do the modern way suppose you know you want to for instance you know understand the volume suppose you have a square ok. Square is there and it is tapering off to a point ok. So, then you construct a cube you know with this side and three of them can be fitted in that. So, that is why this one third factor will come ok. So, one can show one has to think a little bit three of them can be fitted. So, the volume of three the, so this volume multiplied by three must be the volume of the cube which is the area into height. So, one third factor in general how will you get using the so called modern method see suppose you have an arbitrary area ok and which is tapering off uniformly ok. So, then <coughs> see suppose at this so this is the total height h ok and this is the area a here and suppose at this point it is x you know from here top to this thing ok. So, then in this case ok the volume will be you can consider discs ok. So, then this area see this a, a at x you can call it and this a see the length is increasing in x x is increasing right. So, at this point the linear dimension will be proportional to x the linear dimension of the area will be proportional to x and the area itself be proportional to x square. So, you can say that at this point a f x is equal to a by into x square by h square and this disc this thickness is d x ok. So, <coughs> you integrate between 0 and h. So, integral x square d x is x cube by 3. So, integral from 0 to h you get by h square is there. So, a h by 3 right. So, this how we get 1 by 3 ok. 
but what Indians would have done? So, that is you know of course, nobody has stated it, but we can guess it from what they do in Yukti Bhasha for instance. In Yukti Bhasha, they exactly calculate the volume of a sphere using a similar method. So, what they would have done? I am saying you know this is not given in any particular book. Okay? So, some western scholar will scream you know oh it is not given in any book, but I am saying you know given their methods how they would have done. So, what they would have done is they will not write a x d x and all zero. The d x and all that they will not write. What they will do would have done and which is what precisely is done in uh, Yukti Basha for finding the volume of a sphere. So, what they will do is you divide this linearly into n parts. Okay. So, suppose this is at i ith level, okay, ith level. Okay. So, then yeah. So, they would also notice that the area will be proportional to the you know the length square kind of a thing, you know, square of the dimension will what will come. Okay. So, this area, so if this is the area here, the area here would be a into i squared by n square and this is divided into n parts right n so h h h is h is divided into n this thing so this each segment will be h by n okay so <coughs> so this will be h by n okay so now, now is a squared by n square. Okay. So you have to sum. You have to sum over all these slabs. So this is the area of this slab. You know, this area of this slab is sorry. The volume of this slab is a. Area is a into a squared by n squared, and the thickness of the slab is h by n. So this will be equal to this. So essentially, you are getting a by n cube into h into i square. Now you have to sum over i is equal to one to n. Total. Okay. And sigma all over i square, we have got the result, sum of the squares. Okay. And not only that, they will go, they will also estimate, you know, the for large n, it is stated, this very stated very explicitly that for large n, it is n cube by 3. Anyway, you will uh, come across these things when you discuss Yukti Basha. So, then finally, you will get h by 3. So, this would be the Indian way of calculating the volume for an arbitrary kind of cross section. So, that is easy. Or if you are not satisfied, what you have to do is sigma h squared is equal to you know that you know what is the n into n plus 1 into this thing will be 2 n plus 1 by 6. Yeah. So, and uh, Finally, you have to take for large n only, you have to take the limit n going to infinity. Okay. For large n, so only these other terms will be very small because you are taking large n. So, they 1 by n, 1 by n squared will come. So, finally, you get this. So, this is the. So, essentially, similar kind of we do not know Brahmagupta might have used this kind of a thing. Example is given a square well measured by 10 cubits of the type top and by 6 at the bottom is dug 30 cubits deep. Tell me the practical gross and neat contents. Okay. <laughs> so, 10 plus 6 by 2 whole square into 30. So, you can easily see this is the, this is the average of the side square into the depth. So, this average the areas into the depth. So, they are all coming out more or less the same, but not always is it true. And then he talks about stacks. So, these all you know, these are all things which have to be discussed, kind of a thing, something like that, you know, seems to be there volumes and stacks because for practical applications it is there. So, he says the area of the form or section is half the sum of the breadth at bottom and top multiplied by height, and that multiplied by length is a cubic content, which divided by the solid content of the brick is a content in bricks. So, what he is essentially referring to is a situation like this. There is a trapezoidal cross section. Okay. So, the base is B, the summit is S and the height is H and the length is A. So, it is called a trapezoidal stack which is constructed out of bricks. Okay. 
So, then in that case the area of cross section is B plus S by 2 into H. Remember the previous lecture. So, you dwelt upon it at length. So, the trapezoid in trapezium you remember the base plus summit so divided by 2 into the height of the thing. So, that is the cross section and so the volume is uh, essentially this into A right and the number. So, that is what is stated okay. stated volume is this and number of bricks suppose obviously volume divided by volume of one brick right that will be the number. Okay. So, then uh, measure of shadows Deepatala shanku talayo rantara ishta pramana shanku gunam deepa shikocha shankum vishodya sheshodrutam chaya. So, the distance between the foot of the light and the bottom of the gnomon multiplied by the gnomon of given length and divided by the difference between the height of the light and the gnomon is the shadow. So, so that he is situation considering a situation with gnomon Professor Ram Subramanian meant gaga over it right <laughs> two days back. So, so, that is essentially these are nomen, nomen or shanku is called. So, this is the some uh, this thing height you know lamp is here. So, it is causing the shadow. So, C t is the shadow right C d is the nomen shanku uh, C d and C t is the uh, shadow ok. So, then chaya. So, a b is the light of uh, height h. So, C d is nomen g uh, and distance between the foot of the light and the bottom of the gnomon is D, this, this is D, then shadow is S, okay. So, then shadow is clearly C D by C T is equal to A F, these two triangles are similar A F D and uh, D C T. So, C D by C T is equal to A F by A D. So, G by H is H minus G by D. So, shadow S is equal to D into G by H minus G. Okay. So, this is this distance into this divided by h minus g. Okay. That is. So, this is a very this precisely what is the formula stated by Aryabhata for finding the length of the earth shadow in a lunar eclipse. Essentially the same thing because here it is the sun. Okay. Suppose A B is the sun. Okay. So, earth this is this thing and then this is the shadow which is there. Of course, moon will be travelling somewhere here, okay. In a lunar eclipse. When it enters this region, of course, it will be eclipsed, right. So, so the shadow is you know distance between the earth and the sun into the radius of the earth divided by the radius of the sun minus the earth kind of a thing. So, this is straight away applied to eclipse. And then he discusses shadow of two different positions. <coughs> so, essentially, you have got uh, this is one same gnomon. So, the C1, D1, C2, D2, they are the same, except they are placed at different positions with respect to this light source A, B. Okay. So, then, so when it is here, the shadow is C1, T1, when it is here, the shadow is C2, T2. So, then we have to um, there are some relations between between them. So, that is what he is talking about. So, to, to define the distance at the foot of the light and the gnomon and the height of the light given the shadows for two different positions of the gnomon you see. So, if you are given the shadows for two different positions you can find the distance between the light and the gnomon and the height of the light. Chaya grantara gunita chaya chayantarena bhakta buhu Buhu Shankuguna Chaya Vivajita Deepa Shikauchyam. The shadow multiplied by distance between the tips of the shadows and divided by the difference of the shadows is the base. The mass base multiplied by the gnomon and divided by the shadow that is the height of the flame of the light. So, essentially base is, is something slightly he is calling this B T 1 as the base. So, C 1, C 2 are two positions of the gnomon. The distance between the positions of this Shanku is D and then C 1 T 1 the shadow one shadow is S 1 the other shadow is S 2 these are the corresponding shadows and the distance between the shadows is C 1 T 2. So, it is again elementary similar triangles you have to do and um, finally, what you get is 
that h by x t1 t2 is c1 t2 minus c t1 so various c c1 t1 so various things you can you will all all the similar triangles are there triangles a b t1 and d1 c1 t1 they are a, yeah they are similar a b t1 and d1 c1 t1 are similar and similarly a b t2 and d2 c2 t2 they are similar so you get h by x is this and so on so finally you get x this base this base b t1 x is equal to s1 into t1 t2 by s2 minus s1 and height h is shadow into distance between tips of shadows by difference of shadows so base into nomen by shadow so this is this so these are some of the things which are discussed in ramos pada siddhanta of course there is one more chapter they called an algebra so that is contains a lot of interesting results including this kutaka and then all this uh, bhavana principle and all that which uh, professor md shinwas wax eloquent about he will wax even more eloquently in the lectures to come so various things are there and there are many other uh, apart from that of course he has got this khanda kardika where he has got some very interesting results like a second order interpolation formula and other there is also an important short work on astronomy used mainly for calculations and that also has got some interesting second order interpolation formula and other so brahmagupta was really a very creative mathematician and a very a genius kind of a person so he could get various results and these are some of the things only are presented here the references are given here so thank you